we thank you because by your spirit this morning we will yet again have illumination, insight, revelation in your word to know you more, to understand you more, to be what you have purpose and that you have desired for us to be here on earth to the praise and to the glory of your holy name in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah Praise the Lord Jesus is on the throne Amen He is on the throne he is alive. Amen. Christ is alive. The disciples declared it. Say he's risen. Amen. He is alive. Our God is alive. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is alive. He said, because I live, you also shall do what? You shall live. You shall live. Because he is alive. Hallelujah. He said, in this world, you will have what? You will have what? Tribulation. Are you not seeing the tribulation? If you are not seeing it around you, you are seeing it in <laughs> everywhere. Uh, all over the world. In Nigeria. Uh, tribulation all around. You didn't know what tribulation was until you started hearing of uh, Ebola. Is it not true? It's not after some of you now started hearing of Ebola that you now started understanding what tribulation meant. This one doesn't know, he doesn't know who you are. And um, you, you don't have to do anything to, to take it. <laughs> Hallelujah. This one is not uh, HIV. It's a uh, oh, danger. Danger. Come again, danger. Uh, Ebola is it for danger. <laughs> Ebola doesn't know whether um, you are unjo or not unjo. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, you didn't understand what tribulation was until you, you now started here. In fact, when Ebola was outside of Nigeria, nobody, <laughs> some people didn't even know what was Ebola. <laughs> I remember in those days when I would be go, flipping through uh, news reports, I would see a report on Ebola. I just... Just flip the thing. I didn't know what Ebola was. That it didn't concern me. Yeah? Until they now said Ebola in Lagos. And the more I read material on Ebola, the more I wanted to read more. <laughs> Hallelujah. And immediately I shouted. Amen. Praise the Lord. I told us immediately that this one is, um, doesn't have any explanation. And that was when we began to pray and uh, ask God to have mercy. We remember that first day we talked about Ebola. And we prayed and said, God, this is one of the countries in the world that is so disorganized. I mean, everything is upside down. And I had already seen the picture. And I said, if this, thing, if this thing spreads in this country, this nation is doomed. The Bible says, for the sake of the elect, the day shall be shortened. It says, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What that meant was that we are administrators here on earth. Hallelujah. 
if you notice, we've never prayed about Boko Haram. In fact, I was one of the people that told you that the menace of Boko Haram will increase. Are you my witnesses here? Yeah? Did it increase or did it increase? When they said America was coming, the whole nation, everybody was rejoicing. What did I tell you people? I told you that Boko Haram will get worse. Is it not happening? Huh? You don't even, you know, sometimes I marvel at them. I marvel at believers, unbelievers, of course, they don't, you know, they don't understand anything. But I, sometimes I marvel at believers. Now, if you look at what has happened as far as Ebola is concerned, even the world is so surprised that, I mean, in fact, even there is some of the international reports I've been reading, they say this is one country that they've known, that they have never known how to manage anything. How were they able to manage this Ebola? <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? It is still a mystery to the world how they were able to manage it and contain it. But we prayed and said, God, you know, normally we depend on God to save us <laughs> in his usual way, without our impute. But this one requires man's impute, not just God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we prayed and said, God, give our leaders unusual wisdom with which to handle this matter. And that has been at play. Praise the Lord. Now, Boko Haram is... Um, <laughs> you don't understand what is happening. I will explain to you because you need to be aware. Praise the Lord. What they are doing now is that they have started to take territories. In Boronu State, they have taken all the cities in Boronu State. The only city that is remaining is Medigli. They've taken all the towns, all the cities in Boronu State. They've taken some of Yobe State. They've taken also Adamawa State. Now, Medjugri will fall into their hands in a matter of days. That is the truth. Forget about what Nigerian army is telling you. This is a Biafra war. <laughs> a, a news report. Biafra news report. A, Biafra soldiers are entering into Lagos. A, they are now at Ore. Meanwhile, federal soldiers are already entering into <laughs> uh, uh, It called news propaganda. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Boko Haram captured a town, second largest town in the Boronu state called Bama since Tuesday. But the Nigerian military has been telling us, including the government of Boronu state, that Bama is still in the hands of uh, Nigerian military until American government came out and said, Oh boy, the truth needs to be said. Bama has fallen to Boko Haram. Eh? And they are busy lying to you. You know, but you know, we here we tell ourselves the truth because there is no point in lying. Now, the truth of the matter is that I, I told you this thing before, before even the American general said anything about this matter. If you remember, I told you one of the reasons why Nigerian army will not be able to face uh, Boko Haram is because they do not have any commitment to the nation called Nigeria. I said it long before the American general confirmed it to the U.S. Congress that the Nigerian army soldiers are afraid to fight Boko Haram. When that man said it, I remember I told you, he has confirmed what I told you. It's just a matter of days. And we began to see it. 480 foot soldiers 
crossed over to Cameroon seeking for refuge. The Nigerian government told us that it is not true. That what ha happened was that it was a tactical maneuver. That they were chasing uh, Boko Haram people and wandered into Cameroon. That was a fat lie. They were actually running 480 foot soldiers. They were running with armed though. They were running. They ran into Cameroon seeking for refuge. <laughs> they say it's tactical maneuver. <laughs> now, now I'm saying this so you understand what is happening because it's not a laughing matter. Hmm? Now, the truth of the matter is that the brigadier generals, the lieutenant colonels, the majors, and the high ranking, the, the, the main people who lead these people, they will not go to the war front to fight. The people who fight are the foot soldiers. And the foot soldiers are already running. Are, are you getting the, the gist? They are already running. So my question to you is that who is going to stand up to defend you? Huh? Who is going to stand up to defend you? Are you seeing where I'm coming from? Praise the Lord. Now, if Borono State falls into their hands, finally, it will be a chain effect. All the other northern states will be a matter of time. They will follow. Now, what I want to make you understand is that the fact that the people that are fighting these, the, the so-called Boko Haram fighters, they are not goods. They are not, you know, before they told us it was foreigners. People from Niger, the Chad and the rest of them. That's what they told us, not Nigerians. These people are Nigerians. Hmm? Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are Nigerians. They are not goods. Hmm? And they have an agenda. And that agenda is to Islamize Nigeria. Are you hearing me? Good. So, the moment that, that happens, what you are going to have is a religious war. Huh? You are going to have a religious war in this country. Because definitely, the South will not give in easily. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, but the problem we have, that is the problem. The problem is, that, that is the problem we have. The problem is that we are still entrusting our security in the hands of these people who do not have any commitment to protect us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. Now, by the time you and I will realize what is happening, it will be too late. <laughs> I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. It will be too late. Let me tell you because you know sometimes when you say these things, people don't understand. The senator that is in charge of defense was addressing the house, I think it was on Thursday or Wednesday, because they were asking him about situation report. He said that Nigerian military does not have any equipment. Is that news to you? <laughs> A whole Nigerian army does not have any equipment. Hear him. He said, we are now appealing to foreign governments to send equipment to us. <laughs> No, you guys are, are funny. You don't understand what is happening. Now, I'm trying to let you know that the people you are trusting to protect you, eh, they are not committed one bit to protect you. No commitment one bit. I think the only thing that is holding Boko Haram now is the fact that maybe they do not have enough food soldiers. See, if they have enough food soldiers, they will just be rolling the, the, the states like this. I'm telling you the truth. When the army is saying they don't have equipment and the men are not committed to fight, 
who is going to stand up to defend you. What I'm saying this is that you have to be preparing yourself. This is the country where you are. This is the situation. You know, <laughs> when we talk about these things, it sounds like um, Akikiro, is it not? But that's the reality you are facing. That's the reality of life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulations. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. He said, for the sake of the elect, the day shall be shortened. And so, only God can save us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The situation I painted to you is bleak. It is very bleak indeed. It is very bleak indeed. For only God can save us. I don't know how God is going to do it, but only God can save us. I don't know how I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know how what is going to happen, but what what we are seeing will definitely open up a lot of things. Hmm? A lot of scenarios, a lot of dimensions, so many things are gonna in the in the next six months, a lot will be very critical in this country. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have to remain prayerful. You know, it's, you can't say it won't affect you. That's the point. Huh? Ebola is far away in Portacot and um, what have you, Lagos. But you can't relax here in any way and say it won't affect you. Are you hearing me? Because it's just one bus, one bus trip. One, <laughs> one bus trip from Lagos or from, uh, from Portacourt. <laughs> you, you have a ball on ground. It's not one plane trip that brought it. One plane. One individual. <laughs> so, what I'm saying is that it is only God that can save us in this country right now. Amen. Only God. We have, we have their situations and circumstances. Amen. The word I told you is going into turmoil. It's not just happening in Nigeria. Somebody says, okay, Nigeria is cause I'll run to America. I'll run to UK. It's the same it's going to be the same everywhere. Where you are going to run to is going to be worse. Go and write it down. This is the beginning of bad pains. Huh? Where you are running to is going to be worse. Go and write it down. Don't look at Nigeria and say, okay, um, the best thing for me is to run away. <laughs> Where you are running to, you don't have guarantee, you don't have security ever. Because their own visitation eh, is also coming. This is the end time. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to the end times. Hmm? Welcome to the end times. We have been drumming it. We have been preaching this thing. We have been singing it. We have been dancing it. It is upon us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It is what? Upon us. In those days, we used to be mad fellows. But the world will no longer look at us as mad fellows. Why? Because they will be seeing those things we've been talking about happening right before them. Hallelujah. Huh? It will be happening right before them. Who remembers? the economic meltdown in 2008. Was it 2008, 2007, thereabouts? Who remembers the economic meltdown? Did we prophesy it here? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Allah. If you have been following what we have been saying here, we have been saying a lot of things and true to God's word, the things that we have been talking about, they have been happening. Praise the Lord. 
Yeah? Now, I'm not saying it so for us to be afraid or anything. I'm saying it for us to be prepared. Amen. Prepared and to be focused. This is the reason why we have been preaching the way we have been preaching. This is the reason why we don't give in to worldly messages. Amen. That's why when you come here, you don't hear us preaching, take it, receive it. Yeah? Uh, breakthrough. <laughs> and the rest of You don't hear us preaching such rubbish. Hallelujah. We're always preparing you. Why? Because that is the work that has been given unto us to do. Hallelujah. Because uh, take it, receive it. Uh, now that Boko Haram is coming, where are you going to go with uh, the things you have? Uh, eh? Be all you can be, get all you can get. It's because, uh, be all you can be, get all you can get is uh, because uh, Ebola or Boko Haram has not yet knocked at your door. Eh? And then you can be making noise. Be all you can be. Get all you, because if uh, Ebola strikes, where are you going to be all you can be and get all you can get? Or if uh, Boko Haram comes around. <laughs> yeah, so that is, um, that is uh, that's no gospel. Hallelujah. Yeah? But if, if, on the other hand, what you've been hearing has been about preparing yourself for eternity. If uh, Boko Haram Ebola strikes, uh, which one is that? You're already prepared. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, do not fear them that can kill the body and after that they can't do any other thing. He said, but fear him who can not only destroy the body, huh, but destroy the soul. Praise the Lord. So it is the soul that is the issue. Praise the Lord. The soul is the issue. That's, it. That's what needs to be addressed. When you address the soul, the physical uh, is also taken care of. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how the order of God is. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing that you need shall be what? That's the order of God that takes care of the... Somebody say you don't pray for physical and material things. That's the prayer now. The prayer of your soul prays for physical and material things. Amen. Because there's no way that your soul will be taken care of without... The things that you need be made available. Is it not? Oh, God is a wise man. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you are praying for your soul, seeking the kingdom and his righteousness, that is the same time you are also praying for everything that concerns your life. What you are simply saying, let every other thing that pertains to my life Walk according to building me and perfecting me for the kingdom of God. Do you understand it? That's what you're saying. When you are when you are out seeking for the kingdom, you are saying, God, I want you to fashion everything around me to walk towards perfecting me for your kingdom. Hallelujah. It covers every it covers your relationships, it covers your marriage, it covers um, everything. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Some people thought uh, we don't marry in this church. It's not true. Hallelujah. <laughs> but marriages are happening left, right, and center. But he said when you are busy minding the things of Christ, God will also be doing what? Taking care of your own stuff. That's how it works. But some people want to go and 
uh, lock themselves in one uh, seminar where they will be telling, prophesying unto them, no Esther will remain. <laughs> yeah? Is it magic? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, it's, not, it's not magic. So when you seek the kingdom and his righteousness, every other thing eh, will be added. It's a natural thing. It's, it is a natural thing. It, it's just the problem we have is that we don't trust God. Amen. Everything about you, once you are a believer in Christ, is so natural, it's unbelievable. But because of lack of faith, that's why we struggle. It's a natural, it is given. It is settled. Given it is settled. But because you don't have faith, you struggle. Look at Peter. Jesus said, he said to Jesus, if you are the one that I'm seeing walking on this water, he said, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. And immediately, uh, Peter began to walk on water. In other words, the grace for you to walk on water has already been given to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It has been given to you. It is a natural thing. Excuse me. Walking on water is it natural? It's not natural now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the grace of God that has come to you as a believer in Christ has made walking on water a natural thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, leave the Gentiles. It is for them to do what? To run around to look for what to eat and what to drink. He said, but for you it is not so because your heavenly father knows what you need. He says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Huh? He said, everything that you need shall be what? That's it. Peter was seeking the kingdom, walking on water, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of his faith. And as he was looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of his faith, it was a glorious work. It remained a glorious work. It continued to be a glorious work until the storm. And the wind and the rest of them, the boisterous wind and the rest of them began to trouble Peter whilst he was walking on water. Now, whilst the boisterous wind and the storm was raging, where was Jesus? He was still looking for uh, Peter to come. Is it not? Did anything change? Huh? What about the grace that was carrying Peter? Did he change? Did he reduce? What happened? <laughs> Peter considered the, the storm and the boisterous wind more uh, uh, gave, him, gave it uh, more attention that was necessary. Immediately that happened, he began to do what? Yeah, because all the while, he was not working on his strength. He was working on the grace and the power of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your life is based on the strength and the power of God. So that when you take your eyes away from where your strength is, you become an ordinary person. And of course... He began to sink. And in his, uh, in his desperation, he called out to Jesus. And the Lord still showed mercy upon him. The Lord will show mercy unto us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
but we are going to part of the reason why we are here is to know how to do it better than Peter. Is it not? Hallelujah. And we are not seeking to go into the sea like Peter. And then uh, when we begin to sink, we begin to uh, cry for help. Hallelujah. That's the one we normally want to. We want to learn that one. How did Peter we hold? If you go to all these seminars, they hold. That's the kind of seminars. Breakthrough seminar, all this manner of ceremony. Come and take husband, come and take wife, come and take child, come and take money. Um, <laughs> yes, Koboko, Koboko Night. Who have you heard of Koboko, Koboko Night? I don't know whether it's the demons they are going to give Koboko or Amen. All manner of sorry. That's what we want to. We want to go and uh, learn how to call upon God when we are sinking. Is it not? But we are not interested in learning how to walk on water. Amen. That's why you are here to, this morning. Amen. To learn how to do what? Walk on water water. Praise the Lord. That is more safe for, that is safer for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Yep. So he says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything that you need shall be added unto you. So it is a natural thing for God to provide for you. Hallelujah. Very natural. Amen. The grace of God is already made available. So when you seek the kingdom, God takes care of you. Hallelujah. And I told us the only problem that man has with God is sin. Sin is the reason why um, the relationship of God and man has continued to suffer. Praise the Lord. But the Bible tells us that if we confess our sins as he is, uh, as we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? To forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I told us that the blood of Jesus is what cleanses us from what? All unrighteousness. And I told us how do we ensure that? The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, he said the blood of Jesus does what? Cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And so we seek to, walking in the light is like seeking the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's what it is like. It is like going after the father's business. We remember what I said is the father's business. The father's business is to perfect you for the kingdom of God. To transform you into the image of Christ. That is what? The father's business. Now, because of sin, that business has been expanded to include dealing with the flesh and the reconciliation of men unto God. Hallelujah. That's the business of God. And so when you find yourself engaged in this business of God, what happens is that God's intervention will also be made manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Yes, let's quickly turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Are we there? Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 4, beginning to read from verse 1. 
second corinthians chapter 4 beginning to read from verse 1 it said therefore seeing we have this ministry we have received mercy we faint not hallelujah but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully hallelujah is it seeing that we have seen we have this ministry we have received what mercy hallelujah seeing that we have this ministry we have received what we have received what mercy that's true vine fellowship amen hallelujah so it is because of that mercy that we have received from god that has separated us to do what to renounce the hidden things of dishonesty not working in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully did you see that we don't handle the word of god deceitfully we don't try to use the word of god to seek what is in your pocket if you go to a lot of churches today that is what happens both the institutional institutionalized churches and the rest of them all the scheme about from morning till night is what is in your pocket huh? that's what the scheme about or what is in your pocket i have people here who have been with us for god knows how many years you can testify whether by by design or by anything we have been scheming for anyone's pocket in this place even for them for the people for those who have not been here for long they can also testify whether we've been that no since you came we have you been scheming at any time by by either by chance or by any, anyhow <laughs> have you had a scheme for your pocket yeah is it a normal ministry all the other ministries you have gone to have you ever seen it happening that way at once they will be taking two offerings if they don't know what to do hallelujah either by design or by careful anything nobody nobody seeks for your pocket he said we do not handle the word of god dishonestly because we are not seeking for your pocket are you hearing what i'm saying yeah, because we he said we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty the reason why you're here is for god to perfect you for the kingdom of god and we are not going to spare anything until that takes place i'm not interested in your pocket i'm interested in your being perfected for the kingdom of god if it be that i will go hungry as a result of that let it be are you hearing what i'm saying huh but what i ask god for is for grace and for strength to continue to do this work of perfection he said he that descended is he that ascended and he gave gifts unto men some he gave apostles some he gave prophets some he gave evangelists some he gave pastors some he gave teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry towards the edification of the body of christ that is what we stand for in this ministry are you hearing what i'm saying paul said henceforth know ye no man after the flesh so we don't know any man after the flesh hallelujah i say hallelujah glory be to god we are not interested in what is in your pocket not looking at your pocket what do you have yeah? <laughs> hallelujah and we're interested in your soul hallelujah that is the business of god he said seeing that we have this ministry 
we have what? Receive what? Mercy. And that mercy is what has continued to keep through vine fellowship. Are you not witnesses? This ministry is only some people say, ah, he says you don't take tight. You don't take tight. You don't take this. You don't. How, how does the ministry go on? <laughs> I said, God did it call me to take tight and all those uh, seed sowing and the rest of them. He's called me to do what? To perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. Eh? God knows how to do his own business. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He knows how to do his own business. So, you don't have to worry about God. Worry about yourself. Eh? He said, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. He said, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? Lost. That's it. So, you can see why a lot of people struggle with what we preach. Huh? He said, if the gospel is lost, eh, it is lost to them because, it, they, because what? They are lost. It is hidden to them because they are lost. He said, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. For we preach not ourselves. But Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus is... Did you see it there? Somebody said, this thing you could talk about, is it the ekanka or whatever? Do we preach about ourselves? What we preach about, is it not Jesus Christ? What we are talking about, does he relate to ekanka or any other thing? Is it not Jesus Christ? Is it not the Bible as it is written, raw? Eh? <laughs> but you want people who will lie to you. He said, if the gospel is hid, it is hid to you. Why? Because you are a lost soul. You are lost. Because there is nothing really hidden about it. If it is hid, you are lost. Because we are not preaching ourselves. We preach Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't see me come here, you know, and uh, testimony, you know, you know, as I was walking and then uh, I saw one blind man, I put my hand, you know, all those things you say that, you say that people will build faith in you and believe that you are a man of God. I, I don't need to preach all those things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or to give all those uh, strange uh, testimony. You know, every time you say people come out and say testimony. Uh, testimony. What is testimony? Testimony is Jesus Christ forming in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is the only testimony. Jesus, when the disciples went out to heal the sick and came back, they were rejoicing and dancing. Jesus said, what, what, what are you doing? He said, this rejoice not. But rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's the testimony we rejoice about here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A man, after Jesus healed him, came back to him, you know, still in the rejoicing mood. And Jesus said to him, Oh boy, uh, go and sin no more, lest something worse comes upon you. <laughs> eh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, why do you keep losing that, that, that picture? Is what? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Because very soon, that one will become Yamata Kalia. He said, Wagemma. Yamata Kalia, we hear him again. Are you sure you? It's about my hand, Namerigi. Eh? Enough. It's a my hand, Namerigi. Eh? 
I, I won't forget that uh, newspaper headline. Boy from hell. And I was when did the boy talk, when did the boy uh, uh, come from hell? I thought every every child comes from God. When did he become boy boy from hell? Because he killed the mother, he shot the mother to death. Everybody was a boy from hell. This is the problem. When you don't know he had na meregi, eh? Eh? When you don't know he had na meregi, the boy will now become boy from hell or girl from hell because you don't know he had na meregi. He had na meregi is Jesus Christ. Don't put the boy's life or the girl's life into trouble by you know talking about something else are you hearing what i'm saying this is a problem you we are if our parents are the culprits for the waywardness of their children because the way the, the way and manner they try to take care of them as part this this is diamond this is gold eh are, are you hearing what i'm saying one fool said to me uh, he came, you don't want me to go and uh, make money for Mejiwe Zwao Mazin. That's why you came into this world. To go and make money. Kiwe Zwao Mazin. He says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God will give you what it will take to do what? Zwao Mazin. And for your information, whether you are there or not, the Omazi will be Zwaad. <laughs> are you getting what I'm so you are a fool because I'm wondering what you're looking at so much no never a time what you're looking at so much are you hearing what I'm saying never a time it is God all the time but my school fees they tell you all you know you become boy kid it's a lie it's God that provides that money everything he said, what do we have that we have not received? Hallelujah. <laughs> eh? It's God. So don't, don't say it's you. It, it's, it, not, it has never been you. In Jesus Christ. Don't lose sight of it so that you don't put uh, your children into Wahala. Amen. In a was your because now, even so, if you na love again, a heart again, there's a tie to that. You say, if if you will not forsake your father, mother, wife, children, including yourself, eh? brother, sister, you say you cannot be my. Are, are you getting it? So you place the priorities when you place the uh, priorities right, huh? Eh? Some people will tell you, no, China can ask. Have you heard it before? It's true. Oh, China has really. At the end of the day, you forgot that now. If I talk about it, I talk about Oh, China has. If I talk about it, I talk about it. 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 Leroy. Ray. <laughs> Ozio. Eh? Whiskey. <laughs> Ochi Nazu. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ochi Nazu. Ochi Game. Can come you poo. Now draw the cone way he poo. Or buy ante. But you would have gotten the priority. The priorities right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. So he said, This is where I want us to zero in, and that's where we are rounding up. He said, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to give light. To the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. For God, who has done what? Who has commanded what? To do what? 
to shine out of what to shine what is that light that he commanded to shine out of darkness huh jesus christ has done what has shined the same light in our hearts and for the for what purpose to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ this is your destiny this is your mission this is everything that god has called you to are you hearing what i'm saying the same god who commanded light that is jesus christ to shine out of darkness has done what has shined in your hearts in order that what will happen to give light huh? yes to give light to the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ do you understand it that is your mission now this is where you fail and succeed are you hearing what i'm saying this is where you fail and succeed to give light to give light to the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ so my question is to you is how have you been faring with that assignment how have you been faring with that assignment do you know that that is the assignment that will make or, or break you are you hearing what i'm saying how have you been faring with that assignment i don't need to you know talk too much about this thing but you know yourself i know myself are you hearing what i'm saying if the lord should mark us if the lord should mark us based on that assignment what will be your score please if the lord should mark you based on that assignment what will be your score i don't need to tell you that you and i will have a miserable score am i speaking i i talk about huh this is the assignment that God has given you. He said, this is the reason why he has shined his light in your heart. To give knowledge. Huh? To give light to the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. If you look at your life, don't need any prophet to tell you that you have failed woefully and miserably. On that assignment, Ubuabu Oge Amara Ubuabu Oge Amara Ubuabu Oge Amara Gionye Meye Gionye Meye Gionye Meye Jesus Napogi. That's right so certain this is the question you need to be throwing before yourself every day when you come back in the night you ask yourself the same question how have i fared with this assignment that's why the bible says though the outward man perishes it said the inward man is being renewed day by day that is the assignment to give light to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That is what transforms a man. When you look at your life, you find out whether that is happening. Because this is the reason why God brought you into this world. He said, but we all with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed 
into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of God what have you done with the assignment he said God who has commanded light to shine out of darkness has shined in your hearts huh? what are you doing with that assignment the reason why he has shined the light in your heart is such that you will give light to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And that is what changes you from glory to glory into the image of Christ. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Huh? He said, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of, of the fullness of Christ. This is the reason why God has called you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Huh? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish hallelujah i say hallelujah this is what you're doing here on earth are you hearing what i'm saying when you mind yourself with the business of god huh? Every other thing that concerns you, God will take care of it. This is the assignment. This is the reason why God has shined his light in your heart. Huh? To give light, 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 illumination, to give revelation to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Can that be said about you? Jesus said to Philip, how come you are asking, show us the Father? You mean, I have been this long with you and you don't know who the Father is? Is anyone who has seen me has what? Seen the Father. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. He said, my meat is to do the will of God and to finish it. He said, the night cometh. When no man will work, I must work whilst it is day. This is your assignment. That is my assignment. To give light to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That is the expectation of God upon your life. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That is the expectation of God concerning your life. <laughs> That's the expectation of God. Anything you, you are doing and you are not meeting up to that expectation, that's you. And I, so, so, you know, I, can, I keep telling you this guy, this, you know, some people run successful business, he say, Akarakam. Akarakam is a footballer. Because you are making millions of dollars and pounds. You are the world's best footballer, Ronaldo Messi. You are doing, you are Akaraka, the will of God. <laughs> That's the will of God. No, no, you are Messi, Ronaldo. That's the will of God. Beyonce, Whiskey, the band, uh -huh, all those people now. That's the will of God now. In a in a, he's in a, in a high quarters. Amen. Uh -huh. Testimony. P, P squared. Uh -huh. That's your destiny now. It's happening. Uh -huh. All the fine story in uh, Victoria Island. Oh, I can't tell you. Oh, I can't Oh, destiny. Ah, Karakia. We're on a business here. Yeah. On a on a on a golf man, on a fair flow. Eh, yeah. Karakia. Chineke agosi. I don't chineke agosi. Agosi. Agosi remo. Agosi remo. 
Chimle ogozil magozi ogozil nda ogozil magozi otile nja chimle ogozi to give light to what the knowledge of what the glory of God in the face of Jesus. that is your destiny that is your assignment that is your life any other thing in a kuzuba makia na you sabi are you hearing you know he said by by the word of two two or more witnesses every matter you know when you read the scriptures you find out they are saying the same thing they are saying the same thing jesus said what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses this is what life is this is life. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? This is life. He said, this is eternal life that you may know him and the true God. His son, Jesus Christ, the true God. This is it. To give light. God has shined in your heart to give light to the knowledge of the glory of God. Hallelujah. In the face of Jesus Christ. And that glory has nothing to do with anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The glory of God has nothing to do with anything physical or material. He said, once we look not at that which is seen, but that which is seen is temporal. But that which is not seen is eternal. We look for that which is unseen which is eternal praise the lord i said praise the lord i said praise the lord this is god's assignment for you this is god's mission for you mission purpose this is everything his will huh he said i have fought a good fight of faith i have finished my course and now is a crown of glory laid out for me. He said, but not only for me, but also for those that love these appearing. Hallelujah. For brethren, you know, he said, we are children of God, but it doth not yet appear. He said, but when he shall appear, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. He said, he that had this hope in him purified himself even as his view. That is your assignment. Stand up for your feet.